So I um, lucked out, came across a, um, you know, I start every video with so, and I try and stop myself from doing it, and then I'll just do it again in the next video. But I found yesterday at the firewood yard a uh, good, good small pile of mesquite. Um, you know, obviously they're, they're not very small sections because whenever these get cut, they get cut with the intent of being used for firewood. And a lot of people come and snatch up the, the mesquite immediately for barbecuing and smoking. Um, I just happened to get it. Um, but it's good for small projects, I think, like the little cheese boards. Uh, a lot of those locally sold for, uh, that made out of mesquite. And then I'll, there's a couple, like, desk accessories that I've always had in mind. Um, this one, I think, here will be good for turning blanks. Um, God, the flies in this place are ridiculous. So One of the things I like about this pile of wood is that the pith is all the way to the side on most of these. Um, it's within an inch or two of the sides, and then all this here is still good wood. So this is definitely going to probably become a turning blank. Um, that one over there is a little rough, and then i got another piece outside that's um, kind of punky. So I'm not sure how those are going to turn out. A couple of these I haven't even gotten to yet. Um, this is one. You can kind of see the pith is over here, um, although that's kind of in the middle of the usable portion of it, so I'm not sure how I'm going to handle this part yet. Um, and it's got some curvature to it. So, um, which brings me to the point of this video. Several weeks ago, I made this um, sort of sled here for milling. Um, it's definitely not the best. It's got some issues. I need to switch these legs around because this one belongs in the middle. Um, but essentially all it was was a, uh, I'd say a uh, two foot by four foot piece of plywood that I found at the uh, scrap wood yard. Um, actually I had carpeting stapled to it and a tag, like an inventory tag from a moving company. Um, so whatever it was, was moved out here by somebody uh, and then they threw it away. So I took some other, basically this is all scrap wood from the scrap wood yard. So I cut this piece um, into three strips and I took the two pieces that I cut off of this and they're underneath here for some uh, rigidity lengthwise. And then these pieces here are uh, all from another piece of scrap plywood that I got from that same yard. Three quarter inch plywood. A um, little bit of weather damage, but not too bad. Um, I got three of them stacked up here, one down here, and then one at a 45. These are screwed down, but they're not glued down, so I can move them back and forth. Because the one issue that this has is my length, the limit I'm... I have with the length on this. Uh, I can only go up to I think 34 inches um, which really longer than that I really can't even pick that up even using the uh, engine hoist. So 34 inches may not seem like much but at the end of the day it, it's it's a lot more than you realize. At least that's why I keep telling myself because um, I don't build much that requires wood longer than 18 inches let alone 34. So um, you can see up here, I got four holes. What I use is a pipe clamp. I can show you that. So this is with the pipe clamp in place. I've got four holes here, so depending on the size of the wood, I can move this around. Um, and then I sunk screws, so just the tips are pointing out here. That's basically just to give it some grip. Uh, the, the head of the clamp is on this side, so I can screw it down. It pulls the bar in. And then towards the tail end... I added, um, I actually added this later, um, so this is another piece of scrap wood with more screws in there for grip. And then here's the tail end of the pipe clamp right here. So essentially all I would have to do is place the block of wood here, tighten that up, bring that in, and then on this side, screw it down, clamping the piece in there. And then... Uh, this piece here is kind of a zero clearance concept, so I can line up the pith along this and I know that it's going to come in contact with the blade where I want it to and I can cut the pith out and primarily the way I use this is I will take um, odd shaped pieces of wood, this one for example, and I can decide where I want to cut it. So this one here, when it's cut down, it's got very tapered edges. So um, usually what I'll do is I'll just put it up there, rip uh, rip it square, or at least portion of it square, and then 
put it in here this way or this way or however I want it. This is going to be a really awkward piece of wood. Tighten that up, cinch it down, make a cut, and then turn it 90 degrees. Rest it on that flat side and then make another flat cut. I'll do that to all my rough cut pieces of wood. And then once I'm done, I'll get rid of the sled and I can just use the bandsaw table and fence itself. So once I have two square sides, one here and one here, for example, then I can just put it down here, bring the fence up, and then rip to whatever thickness I want. Uh, you know, one quarter, four quarter, or excuse me, four quarter, eight quarter, whatever I want, um, depending on the size of the wood and my vision. I really just kind of guess, really. It's just kind of whatever I feel like at the moment. So this is a really awkward piece of wood, so it's going to be interesting. Um, I'm probably just going to rip a flat side first and then um, cross cut the end. I said rip earlier. Cross cut the end um, and then rip that second side. So we'll see how this goes. One of, the thing, uh, one of the issues that this design creates is it does get a little tipsy. I've got the rollers front and rear, um, but a lot of times when I've loaded this up, it still twists a little bit and I've got to apply downward pressure on the bar to hold it in place. So that is one of the things i got to worry about with this. Um, and this um, blade is awesome. It has got a little bit of wear on there now and a lot of pitch buildup, which I have to take off and clean um, pretty soon. I cleaned it once already because um, it got real bad. Um, but this blade costs two hundred dollars, and it's a lot more than the thirty to forty dollar timber wolves I was using before. Um, but it's lasted through a lot of wood so far, and I'm really terrified about damaging it because it is just so expensive. Um, so I'm very careful about letting this twist, um, which is an issue that with this sled. That uh, one day, when I don't have to be so compact and portable, I'll, I will spend a little bit more time building something probably a little bit more permanent. I love the grain pattern. So, uh, as you see, I just said okay. So again, um, I got two 90 degree. I got flat two flat faces that are 90 degrees from each other. So the remainder of the cutting on this, I'm not going to use the sled for. It's just going to be flat on the bed with the fence next to it, and then I'm, I can cut it there. And then um, this one is probably a really bad example for this video because the pith is about an inch away on this side and about an inch and a half away on the opposite side. So a pith goes through here crooked. Um, the usable portion is probably going to be over here for like, you know, small gadgets or something. But, or, or you know, from this section. But um, a lot of the ones I've been cutting so far, and ideally what I, what I shoot for, is to line that pith up along that line and cut along that line, which unfortunately would be like this. Um, and it would just, I'd get two wedges. Um, so some of these are going to be a little bit more challenging than others. Um, but that's what I'm shooting for is to cut either on the pith or just to the side of it so that my second cut is just cutting the pith out and I have all the remainder of that usable wood to pre uh, prevent all this checking that you see going on already. So it's still wet. Um, you know what? Let me get my moisture meter. So uh, let's see what this says. Wow. That was peaking at uh, 39 and change. So, obviously very wet. Um, very wet. So, we'll let this dry. And then, uh, oh, I'm going to cut it up a little bit more and then I'll put it out back to dry. Um, I really need to paint the ends. Unfortunately, I'm lazy.
I grabbed this at the same time. This piece is considerably less moisture content. Um, it's interesting that maybe this is just part of the trunk that was dead or something. I don't know. So now I got two. The side is sitting on this square, this side square. So same piece here. Uh, that earlier cut here was basically just to knock that hump off because it wasn't going to clear the uh, bearings. Okay, so I moved the pipe clamp down to a, the lower tube uh, to be able to get grip on there because this piece was too small for the existing setting. And I've got the pith lined up on the cut line, um, but there's a little curvature right here as you can see. So it might deviate and then this upper pith shoots across to this side. So that piece there probably ended up just getting cut off at some point anyway. It was really probably not a usable piece. So the versatility in my work. surprise um, you can see down here it's got a lot of um, bug activity kind of punkiness um, but the rest of this wood is 100% better than I expected I expected this to be all throughout um, not just the uh, outer you know what is it cambium layer or whatever um, a rough cut because it was kind of wobbly and there's a couple parts where the it started to shift because my other support wasn't working that well uh, so I had to hold it but um, Pretty good cut. Um, not really sure what I'm going to end up using this for. It's probably going to end up being boards at this point. Might be able to turn some of this. Um, that's the hardest part about milling is deciding what you want to do with it. So. Okay, so I'm done with the sled for now. Uh, so now it comes down to just bringing the fence over and ripping this to whatever thickness I choose. So uh, now I have the ability to put my guard back into place. It's just a lot of blade to have sticking out. Let's bring it over. Uh, this one here, probably just going to cut. Uh, well, I'll cut this side flat first. Um, and then I'll just rip it in half uh, with the remainder. So that's three. I got one inch there, but then it's two inches on that side and one inch. So like I said earlier, it'd be a complete wedge. Um, so this, I'm probably just gonna cut straight down the middle and, and, and we'll see what happens. So do an inch and a half. Okay, uh, so that's pretty much all I need to show you guys on this one, I think. Um, the rest of it's just gonna be all out of the same thing. Uh, it's real hard to push through because it's wet. Uh, that's why it's getting all this pitch build up on here. Um, fortunately, mesquite doesn't have that much pitch, apparently, because it's not as bad as it was on the other woods that I was milling when I first made this. You can feel how wet that is. Um, but I love this blade. I still have a super smooth finish. Um, this I might just knock off a little bit get that bark inclusion out of there just let this dry clean it up and you know leave this as a cheese board as is maybe rough this over a little bit smooth it out 
Um, but yeah, that's the mill. Gets me down to what I can use on the bandsaw in its natural state. So thanks for watching.